Hey guys, Facundo Holzmeister here with How To Men. Today I wanted to show off an early Android Pie build on the Galaxy S9. Samsung is calling this update Samsung Experience 10.0, and there's plenty of new changes and features to try out. Of course, this build is in its early stages, so anything I'm about to show off can still change or be removed. So without any further ado, let's see what's new. Starting with some general Android Pie changes, Samsung is following Google's path and making everything round or at least rounded. That includes the notifications, quick setting tiles, the pages in the recents menu, search bars, menu selections within the settings, and more. Like Google, Samsung also moved the time in the status bar to the left. It also has a similar looking overview page and gesture enabled nav bar, but I'll get to those features in a minute. One of the biggest things I noticed in this early build is the overall theme change from light to dark. Samsung is calling this theme Night Theme. It basically makes the background of most pages AMOLED black. At the moment, it is broken as there are a few pages that aren't pitch black and the theme is forcibly enabled at all times. But I'm glad that Samsung is finally supporting native dark theming since their Super AMOLED panels can provide some incredibly deep blacks. If I pull down the notification panel, you can see a couple of new changes. First off, the background color changes based on your launcher's wallpaper. A notifications action such as reply, delete, and so forth are now centered instead of being off to the edge. There's also a new search icon at the top to quickly search for apps, system settings, or do a Google search. The quick settings panel is where things start to get interesting. The drop down panel has turned into a full blown page where your time and date are near the top. Three row tiles in the center, which can be swiped right to reveal more, and the brightness slider is at the bottom. It's a weird move, especially considering that there is no real advantage to Samsung's quick setting changes. It still only shows you 12 tiles at once, and the large font for time and date seem like a waste of space and a lazy move. Speaking of oversized text that take up a huge amount of space for no reason, Samsung threw it all over the place. These gigantic titles are in the settings for every section in the Bixby panel and inside most of their stock apps including Messages, My Files, and more. It reminds me a lot of Windows 10 when you first boot up your PC. With giant text everywhere, I don't think too many people are going to be happy with this decision, including myself. Another huge change is the overview menu. It has that Android Pie style look with your recently opened apps in the center, a dock right below it which is pretty buggy, and a search bar at the top. Swiping up on the dock will bring up the app drawer. The nav bar has some new icons which I think look better and they're now gesture enabled. Swiping up on the recents button will bring up the recents menu and swiping up on the home key will take you to your launcher. Sort of like on stock Android, you can also pull the home button to the right in the recents page to scroll through your recently used apps. It's not a direct copy of Google's gesture enabled navbar, but it has most of the same features and it works really well. Samsung is also planning to include a gesture only navbar with no buttons. It's very similar to what OnePlus did. It doesn't work just yet, but this will be a great navbar alternative since it will free up a lot of screen real estate. The lock screen has also been redesigned a bit. The clock and day are closer to the middle, right above your notifications, but you can still change the clock style in the settings so it's not a huge deal if you don't like it. The quick app shortcuts also no longer show the icons of an app, just the color which I think look a lot cleaner. As for the settings, it has most of the same menus and features but with a different looking UI. I enjoy the new colorful icons and switches but I'm not a fan of the rounded cards. It would be fine except they're cut off at random places. For example, on the main page there are 8 cards with some having 2 selections and others having 3. I'm honestly not sure what Samsung was thinking when redesigning the settings menu. Hopefully they're just experimenting and this isn't the final look. As for new features in the settings, there aren't that many. Under display, there's a new option called Night Theme which, as I said before, is native dark theme support. You can schedule this dark look, turn it on when you're in a dark place, and set your phone to decrease the brightness when Night Theme is enabled. Samsung finally decided to unify all their gesture and motion features into one section and there's a new feature called Live to Wake which, you guessed it, turns the display on when you pick up the phone from the table. Lastly, there's a new gesture only navbar option which I already mentioned but it doesn't work yet. Most of these Samsung apps and services have also been touched up. The Samsung dialer is dark themed and has moved all of its menus to the bottom. The messages app has also moved around its menus and buttons. Bixby services all look extremely different. Bixby Home looks like this. Bixby Voice looks like this. And the Bixby panel on the launcher looks like this. It's a great improvement in my opinion. Bixby loads up a lot faster, doesn't look as messy, and isn't as laggy anymore. The camera has moved a couple menus and options around, mostly towards the bottom. However, you can no longer swipe to switch modes in the viewfinder, and the shutter key doesn't allow you to quickly zoom in anymore. I'm low-key kind of sad that those two features are gone. The gallery has also moved its menus towards the bottom and has a dark theme. 
And Samsung internet looks way more modern with some better customization, different icons, and a centered address link. So yeah, all these new looking Samsung apps have a similar theme. Every menu, selection, or panel is rounded. Each app supports or will most likely support night theme, and most of the app navigation menus have been moved down to the bottom for ease of one-handed use. Lastly, there's a few minor changes I noticed like the volume panel, the screenshot editor, Samsung's keyboard now supports theming, and the launcher has some different looking icons and search bars. There's probably some other minor UI changes I didn't cover, but now you've pretty much seen all of the major ones. In conclusion, this new early build of Android 9 for the S9 is a huge design update mixed with pious general features. Some of the interfaces look great while others need some rethinking. There aren't that many new features yet, but the ones that were included look promising. I don't recommend you download this Android Pie build just yet because you'll experience plenty of crashes, bugs, and non-working features that could potentially cause issues like boot loops. I did it so that you don't have to. However, if you want to live life on the edge and you want to try it out anyways, I'll drop a link to an article by XDA where they explain how to get this early build running on your Galaxy S9. It doesn't require root. Either way, that's a quick look at Android Pie on the Galaxy S9. Let me know what you guys think of this new build. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed for more awesome smartphone content. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Kapow!